Hi there everyone, today we're going to talk about one of the all-time great engineers. And it's not Brian McManus <laughs> from the Real Engineering YouTube channel. Certainly not. He's just here as a special <laughs> guest today, having a look at some stuff with us, and we're glad to have him here. It is a man over here. No, it's not you, Rupert, either. It is John Smeaton. There we go. What do you reckon, Brian? Rupert calls this the Princess Leia haircut. <laughs> But the important thing is what's just behind him. We all know what this is. It is a lighthouse. It's not just any lighthouse. It's a very important, historically significant lighthouse. And we're going to come to that a bit later on. But first of all, we're going to look through some of the many works of John Smeaton in these huge tomes here. Tell us about John Smeaton, who I hear is the father of civil engineering. He was. He, he really was a prolific engineer of the mid to late 18th century. These are his designs made on various occasions in the course of his employment as a civil engineer from the year 1750 to 1790. Brian, do you keep a scrapbook of your old work like this? <laughs> like, Not quite. No. Definitely not as prolific as that. These are Smeaton's original engineering drawings for the all of the projects he was involved in. They are for the big civil engineering works, but quite often for, for some routine pieces of machinery as well. And if we just turn the pages here, you'll get an idea of that kind of thing. So this is a design for the skeleton of a crane for the wool key at the Customs House in London. I feel deprived at the fact that we have to use computer programs now and we don't get to slave over drawings like this for days upon days. So this is a piling gin, so it's a pile driver. So these are the engraved versions of the machine. Yeah. This is a perspective view of the engine now made use of for driving the piles of the new bridge at Westminster. And here we have a three horsepower controlled. Three horsepower, driver. quite literally. Quite literally three horses. So this is a floating beacon. So you can see the, the, the kind of boat part, the floating mm -hmm. part is there, and a beacon to save ships, just like that other great work he did to save ships, the... Sorry, no, I mentioned it. <laughs> At the end. This is how engineering's supposed to be done. Don't you reckon? Absolutely. Yeah, have... I wish I got to do that. I, it's like meditative getting to draw like that. Saying the detail, the shading and everything, you can imagine like he has the knowledge of perspective and shading of an actual artist. They're not just sketches. Well, it is interesting, isn't it, that they're more than you would need to actually build the thing mm -hmm. itself. And quite often engineers, especially in the 19th century, there was great stock put on the amount of finish you could put into a drawing. Mm. Because what you wanted to do was not just build a thing, but impress a client so that they would actually pay for the thing to be built. Here's a little sea compass. Look, that's beautiful little ink wash there. Wonderful. And you can see Phil Trans. So this is something he did for the Royal Society's Philosophical Transactions for publication. So he's not just a jobbing engineer, he's considered to be a proper scientist mm. as well, published in the Royal Society's journal. So these are mostly warehouses mm -hmm. by the look of it now. He's going through his warehouse phase. His warehouse <laughs> phase, yes. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, Keith, we're at the business end of things now. This is probably the crowning glory of his career. What is That's this lighthouse? Right. What's it all about? Well, the Edison Lighthouse is one of the great pieces of 18th century engineering. How do you put a lighthouse on a rock in the middle of the ocean and keep it there? Smeaton's idea was to do with waterproof cement, which our engineering chum will tell us all about now. Talk us through it. Yeah. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> There are different types of engineers. He's not one of those ones. <laughs> oh, right. okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Smeaton is replacing a wooden structure in the 1750s with a full stone structure. And these are preliminary drawings by the looks of things, early designs. These are pretty cool designs. Oh, it's amazing. And they have the, the shape of the rock. It was not an, a flat piece of land, like not easy to build on for foundations mm. and everything. We were looking at these earlier, Brian and I, and we found these very interesting. These, we think, are the plans, the floor plans, of the stones gradually going up and narrowing as the, the lighthouse reaches its pinnacle, where the light would be, of course. Like each face, the angle seems to be getting tighter and thinner as they go mm -hmm. up. Getting increasingly complicated. And by the time we get to the end, we have a fully-fledged lighthouse. Now, it's a beautiful, it's very elegant, isn't it? Mm. It's very beautiful. And obviously there was someone living in these lighthouses back then too. Yep. Somebody had to light the lamps. British ships were going all over the world. I mean, the traffic on the oceans was huge. You needed lighthouses to save lives. This is really important stuff. You can get some idea of the difficulties of the engineering problem from there. Even just getting the materials onto the land, you couldn't, you couldn't have a big stockpile of rock that you could be moving. You'd have mm. to move it directly off a boat. And then where do you put the crane and everything else? 
to actually lift the stone up. That seems like it would be tough even today. Mm. So famous engineer, father of civil engineering, and this is his marquee project, bit of a big deal. And we should mention that you can still see it because even though it was taken down and replaced by a bigger and better lighthouse, a more modern one, they re-erected this on Plymouth Hoe. It was so okay. famous by that time that they wanted to preserve it. So you can still go along and see it. All right, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Smeaton. Thank you, very nice. Shall we skip forward another 100 years mm -hmm. to another chair? All right, Keith, what have we got here? This, this looks nice and cosy as well. What's this chair? Well, this is, this is actually my favorite chair in the Royal Society. This is the most comfortable chair in the Royal Society. So it's a Victorian chair. This would have been in Burlington House where the Royal Society was at that period. You may not want to get out of this one. <laughs> okay. uh, but we do have pictures of this in Burlington House or a chair very much like it where Lord Kelvin is sitting in it. 